Excellent! Hey guys, Paul here. Welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today I have a uh, sort of a different kind of video. Um, if you guys recall, perhaps uh, recently, I did a couple videos unboxing the Sabertooth Z87 uh, and the Z87 Pro, both motherboards from Asus, Z87 chipset, 1150 socket for Intel's uh, Haswell processors. Now, I asked y'all for some advice or some uh, suggestions for what type of coverage you might want to see with these motherboards. And I will say there was lots of requests for a build. That's what I'm going to be saving the Sabertooth Z87 for. So this is going to go in a full system build, which I have yet to part out. That's a future video. So I'm going to set this one aside for now. Today's video is all about this one. This is the Z87 Pro. Um, now, another request I got a lot of, of requests for was uh, overclocking, of course, because that's a hugely popular subject, particularly when it comes to building computers, building your own computers, building a high-end computer. Uh, all you really need is a K SKU processor from Intel right now for Haswell. You got the 4670K, uh, which is the four core, no hyper threading, or you have the 4770K, which is four cores with hyper threading. So four physical cores and eight logical cores. Um, yeah, okay, so the Z87 Pro from Asus features they're four-way optimization, so this that's uh, that's what this is right here. Dual intelligent processors. It's their TPU chip and their EPU chip. The TPU chip uh, handles some overclocking algorithms and presets, and it can auto-tune your your motherboard, for example. EPU is for energy saving. Four-way optimization goes through uh, TPU, EPU, uh, fan expert, and then there's one last one which I will correct myself on in just a moment. But it does all that stuff, and you you click one button, and it goes to and automatically tunes it all. Now. I view this from kind of a couple different perspectives. The the enthusiast in me says, well, that's cool and all, but I, I don't want some automatic overclock. I want to get in there and adjust the settings myself. Uh, the pragmatist in me says, that's awesome. It's really easy. You click one button and then you have an overclock. Now, uh, I have been doing some testing with this already, so I can tell you guys the overclocking features uh, of the TPU chip are quite effective. Um, they might not be as fine grained as uh, a lot of you might consider. Um, especially if you've done overclocking yourself in the past. But if you want to really quickly dial in a pretty high-end overclock, it's a very effective means of doing it. So, with that long intro out of the way, this video is going to be all about the 4770K and overclocking using four-way optimization from ASUS. But, more specifically, I'm actually looking to get a little bit of benefit out of this myself, if nothing less than to help me out with my work over at Newegg TV. To that end, we have a set of 4770K CPUs in right now, which are going to be used for a variety of purposes, but primarily for builds and maybe some giveaways. And uh, I, I was like, hey, I wonder how these perform, because I've heard there's a huge variance in 4770Ks. Or maybe not huge, but there's a pretty big variance. You might get a chip that can overclock a little bit, and maybe you can get a little bit of memory overclock. You might have other chips that can do both, like really high end. Getting one that can do both it seems to be a bit harder to come by. Um, but there seems to be like like you might get a chip that can only clock to like 4.3 or 4.4 and then you get others that can do 4.8 and then you might have different memory frequencies that they accept in between there. So I'm going to be using dual intelligent four processors and the four-way optimization features of this board to test one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven Intel Core i7-4770K processors. Um, so with that said, I guess uh, let's just take a dive in. We'll take a look first at the test bed and my methodology for running these overclocking tests. So here is a look at the test bed. It's a Lian Li T60B. That's the test bed itself, of course. Motherboard, uh, the Asus Z87 Pro, as we've been looking at. And for the processor, of course, the Intel Core i7 4770K. Seven of them in total, and I'll be swapping them out throughout the course of this test. Uh, for cooling, we have the Thermaltake Water 2.0 Extreme, which does a fine job. Uh, for memory, I actually have a couple kits. One's a Corsair Low Profile 4x4 gig DDR3 1600 kit, and I use that for my uh, initial set of overclocking with four-way optimization. And then I also have a G-Skill Trident X kit that's for also by 4x4 gigs DDR3, and that's a 2666. Um, and the four-way optimization will overclock that to 2400 speed. Uh, for video card, just got a Zotac GeForce GTX 550 Ti in there so that the processor won't also be pushing GPU duties. For storage, a uh, Corsair Neutron GTX 240 gig. I'm running Windows 8 and for power, an Antec High Current, High Current Pro 1200 watt. 
As far as testing methodology, um, first off, if anyone is planning on doing this, I definitely recommend saving a stock configuration profile. It's an option in the UEFI BIOS. Just go ahead and do optimize defaults and then save that so you can jump back to it whenever necessary. So basically after each CPU is installed, I'm just doing a quick 30 minute IDA64 burn in as well as a rest period. Uh, and then of course starting off with the Corsair 1600 speed RAM. After that I run the four-way optimization test and log the results and that's basically seeing how far the, the CPU can overclock while the memory stays capped at 1600. I then am running Passmark as a stability test. If you're wondering why I'm not running IDA64 or something like Prime95, it's because those types of programs apply an additional amount of voltage to the fourth generation Haswell processors, which you will never see in any other tests. Um, anyway, after that I jump in and install the uh, G-Skill 2666 speed RAM, run four-way optimization again. And that will put the memory at 2400 speed if the CPU is, if the CPU is stable. At that speed, I go ahead and set the memory to 2666, the top speed it can go, and then I run pass mark again. If it hits all of these points, then I run an IDA64 burn in test just for five minutes because, again, these aren't my CPUs, uh, but I do want to see if they will maintain stability. And there we see some pretty high temperatures depending on the overclock. And we also see additional voltage that you won't see with any other tests except something like IDA64 or Prime 95. So let's take a look at CPU number one. Now this is my engineering sample CPU and this was described to me as a middle of the road when it comes to overclocking CPU um, when it was lended to me. Pretty much as expected it hit about it hit 4.4 gigahertz on the initial overclock and 4.3 gigahertz on all four cores. Um, so you'll notice when it's doing the four-way optimization, it'll go for a higher overclock using just two cores, and then if it achieves that, it will go for that overclock with all four cores. So sometimes we'll see all four cores at the same frequency, sometimes we'll see two cores at a higher frequency, and all four cores at a lower frequency. The voltage was at about uh, 1.27. Uh, after that, I went ahead and ran a pass mark, got a score of 4,728. Uh, and the voltage again 1.273 on this one with the 4.4 gigahertz overclock so pretty decent performance there um, next up i went ahead and i ran the g skill memory so that got up to 2400 speed uh, again 4.4 gigahertz and 4.3 gigahertz with that configuration pass mark test actually dropped a little bit i'm not sure why that's a lot 4682 but uh, apart from that uh, we also set the memory to 2666 was also successful there, so that uh, pass mark rating was 4,943.6, and uh, pretty much a, a nice, decent overclocking CPU. This engineering sample, 4.4 gigahertz on two cores, 4.3 gigahertz on four cores, and it did also survive the IDA64 burn-in test, although the vid did jump up to 1.38. CPU number two was an individual CPU. It didn't come in a group like uh, CPU number three through seven. Uh, and this one was actually the lowest performing and also a, a bit of an anomaly with this one. First off, when it did the initial overclock, um, which for the four optimiz optimization is 4.3 gigahertz on one and two cores, 4.2 gigahertz on three cores, and 4.1 gigahertz on four cores, it wasn't actually even able to remain stable at that speed so um, I got several blue screens after the initial restarts once the test ran I actually had to jump into the BIOS and I applied uh, an additional voltage offset of 0 0.075 which wasn't that much but it did stabilize the overclock and actually after doing that it was able to overclock up to 4.4 gigahertz and 4.3 gigahertz which is again a decent overclock kinda like the engineering sample uh, it was stable at that speed. I got a pass mark score of 4,854. Um, however, um, it did maintain its stability um, when I popped in the G skill memory. So at 2,400 speed, I was able to run through the pass mark test and I got my score of 4,734. However, um, there was instability there. So um, due to that, I uh, did not go and run the uh, additional tests at 2666. So uh, again, this was the, lo the lowest form performing of the CPUs and uh, without some additional help from an additional voltage, it actually only hit 4.3 gigahertz. The next set I'm gonna go through a bit more, more quickly because the next five CPUs uh, are the five that all came in one big batch. So they were all CPUs that were right next to each other 
and as a result, they all uh, performed very, very similarly. So starting with CPU number three, this was the first one I popped in, and uh, my jaw just kind of dropped because it just kept going. I went to 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, and eventually hit 4.8 gigahertz on two cores, 4.7 gigahertz on four cores. Um, when I went with 2400 speed memory, it did need to drop it down to 4.7 gigahertz. Uh, on two cores and 4.6 gigahertz on four cores, but uh, again, still pass pass mark with that. 5,053 was the score, um, and then uh, with the 2666 speed memory, hit 5,133, which was very nice. Uh, the luck did continue with CPU number four. Uh, that one hits uh, not quite as high, 4.6 and 4.5 right off the bat. Um, but it was able to maintain that uh, even with the 2400 speed memory and um, a again a very nicely performing CPU and you might notice here again the voltage still uh, just hitting about 1.27 that seems to be the theme and the uh, voltage amount that, that uh, ASUS is going with pretty frequently with the their their four-way optimization software. I did run through this all the way and do the IDA64 burn-in test. So even at uh, 4.6 gigahertz on two cores, 4.5 gigahertz on four cores, with the 2666 speed memory, and the IDA64 burn-in test did pass. So uh, a nice solid CPU there. CPU number five was a big hit once again, and uh, was another one of our 4.8 contenders. So 4.8 and 4.7 was the initial. Uh, results for two, for two and four cores respectively uh, had a re really nice score of 5040 which I think was one of the higher scores for the 800 uh, frequency memory uh, with the 2400 speed memory uh, it did drop down to 4.7 and 4.6 um, and then when I did drop in the, uh, the 2666 speed memory it, it did still main maintain stability there However, uh, with the IDA64 uh, burn-in test, the vid jumped up to 1.332. Uh, it did get very hot. In fact, I hit 100 degrees Celsius on three of the four cores, and some CPU throttling did take place as a result. Uh, maximum was only 8%, but still, it was uh, getting a bit too hot, so that's another example where um, some system testing does, uh, does play a part, and uh, I definitely would have backed off the overclock on that. Uh, again, this was only uh, using the IDA64 test. It was just fine using the other tests, um, but uh, and that was also with the 2660 speed, 66 speed memory. CPU number six uh, dropped just a bit. Uh, 4.7 and 4.6 was the initial testing. Uh, after that, we hit 4.7 and 4.6 with a 2400 speed memory. Uh, got a nice pass mark score of 5112. And then after that, with the 2666 uh, speed memory, still passed uh, the Passmark test and also the IDA64 system stability test. And finally, we have CPU number 7. CPU number 7 was a little bit stranger because initially I got 4.6 and 4.5 um, with the initial tests, and I went ahead with that because it's still a very nice overclock. Uh, but then when I jumped up to the 2400 speed memory, uh, it actually, the frequency went up as well, so 4.7 and 4.6 with the 2400 speed memory. So I just said, okay, let's run with it and try the 2666 speed memory there. Uh, I did still pass the pass mark test uh, with a score of 5127. And I did pass the uh, IDA64 test, however, uh, I, did, I was hitting about 95 to 100 degrees Celsius on the cores, so that's something where I definitely would have backed it off a bit. Um, just if I was going for a, a more stable overclock or an overclock that I wanted to leave for a longer period of time. So in closing, I would have to say that I was actually very impressed with several things uh, throughout the duration of making this video. First off, uh, the four-way optimization, very, very well tuned, I must say. Uh, the voltage was not, uh, it seemed a little bit more standard to me. Um, it didn't seem like the, it was making voltage adjustments too much, but they were putting in what seemed like a safe voltage, and then they were seeing what kind of frequencies the CPUs could get up to after that. Honestly, I didn't have that much time to play around with each configuration when the CPU was installed because I was trying to get through them all. Um, so I didn't really have that much chance to go through and, and try to tweak the other settings manually on my own. But what I did try, I found that the frequency that the uh, four-way optimization was able to get to was pretty close to the to the peak frequency. I mean, I, I know some... Uh, 
some exotic cooling, some higher end cooling, uh, like a, a custom liquid cooled loop uh, could probably get you a bit further than that, or if you're going with exotic cooling or something like that, or some really extreme uh, cooling uh, on the VRMs with fans or something like that. You, you could probably go higher. Uh, you could probably tweak the, the voltage a bit more yourself if you are going to use this. Um, uh, that's one thing I'm going to try to do is see the lowest voltage I can get with some of these overclocks. Um, but at least from a quick and simple way to uh, take your, your K-SKU processor, click a button, see what kind of overclock you can get. And for, for this purpose, it was extremely effective at seeing the peak frequencies that a lot of these processors, processors were able to hit. Uh, a couple more closing remarks. I am absolutely stoked by the group of CPUs that we got. Um, they, they came to us in a batch of five. And those, as you might have noticed, uh, they're all from the same batch. So chances are those are all from the same wafer. So the ones we were getting 4.8, 4.7 on, uh, those are all grouped kind of close together. Uh, the other two, CPU number one and CPU number two, uh, one was an engineering sample, number one was, and uh, CPU number two was from a different batch, so it uh, wasn't performing quite as well. Um, I also need to point out that this is a very, very small sample size when it comes to the total number of 4770Ks that are out there, so please don't take this to be a blanket like, you know, 70% of 4770Ks should be able to hit 4.7 or 4.8 right out of the gate. That's probably not going to be the case. But I'm really happy to say that uh, we have some, some nice overclocking chips here that we can try out ourselves uh, for future benchmarking and stuff like that over on Newegg TV. So uh, more of that I'm sure will be coming as soon as we can get the videos created. But I had better sign off for now. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the Intel 4770K and its overclocking potential. Pot potential? It's overclocking potential. The like button, of course, right down there in the lower left corner. Uh, go ahead and hammer on that for me if you guys can. And uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.